Hello. Hello, I'm Dr. David McFadden from the Dental Implant Center in Dallas, Texas. Today we're going to talk about very specific definitions of an implant bridge. We get a lot of questions on our YouTube channel and uh, we hear a lot of other offices claiming they do implant bridges and I want to educate you today on the differences between all of them. So you'll hear in many of my videos I talk about implant bridges. I talk about not using angled implants or angled abutments. And I hope today's demonstration is going to show you the profound difference between the prostheses that implant doctors uh, claim uh, to be the best for you. Uh, the implant bridge, I've got an example of it right here, and uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. But um, I wanted to start off and, and explain some of the parts and pieces today. It's going to be very technical, so uh, you might need a cup of coffee to go through this. But first thing, this big metal device right here, I want to uh, describe what this is. This is called an articulator. And in dentistry, what it does is it simulates uh, human uh, jaw anatomy. And we also can, on an uh, an articulator that is adjustable, we can flip this switch and now we can move the jaws like human jaws. These condyles are set to mimic the angle of the human condyle. So we can set this switch down and it simply opens and closes like a, a, a hinge or we can open it to adjust the bite uh, and this would simulate functional movement. Functional movement would be while you chew or while you grind your teeth. So this is, this is an articulator and uh, I would certainly hope that every office in implant dentistry would be using articulators for all of their reconstructive efforts. There's a lot of shortcuts that are being taken uh, and most of it's about saving money. But an articulator is an invaluable piece of equipment in our uh, armamentarium for dental implant treatment. This happens to be the patient that you're going to see in a little bit. And if I take this off, you'll see that this, this is the way the patient was with their temporaries. So the temporary bridge that we make for the patient either at surgery, if we have enough uh, implant stability. We make this implant bridge for them at the time of implant surgery. If we don't have great implant stability, we have to wait two months to make this implant bridge. But it's our first prototype. It's the first prosthesis where we get to look at the patient and say, do we all like it or don't we? And if we don't love it, what changes are we going to be able to make to make it perfect? So the implant uh, temporary bridge, prototype number one. Once the implants are healed and the soft tissues are all developed and, and as mature as we need them to be, we'll go ahead and do a final impression. A final impression is done in the mouth on the implants. It's a very specific technique that we use. Just don't have time to get into that today. But this is a master cast. This master cast uh, started out with the impression in the patient's mouth. Secondarily, we do a verification. This master cast has to be perfect. It has to mimic what's in the mouth down to the micron. And that might be a slight exaggeration, but we certainly try to make these prostheses fit as perfectly and as pass passively as possible. So this master cast, once it's in stone, we ask the lab to be very, very delicate with it because any changes in the master cast are going to impose errors in the final prosthesis. So this is a master cast. This is the basis or the foundation that we work from. I'm going to show you some real small parts and pieces here. The blue thing I'm holding is a lab analog. It's, it simulates what's in the mouth. The very top of it is, is what's in the mouth, the actual implant. So the analog represents uh, the part of the master cast uh, that we'll use to engage the implant prosthesis. What's on top of the analog is our titanium cylinder. And the titanium cylinders are extremely small. And that, but part of what makes the prosthesis uh, either cleansable or not is this little piece right here. We'll get to that in just a minute. 
I talked to you about several different prostheses. I'm going to show you the implant bridge next. It comes in a jewel case. Um, it's expensive, so it should come in something that looks like jewelry. So take it out of there, and I'll let you see the implant bridge. I say in my videos, looks, feels, functions, and cleans just like natural teeth or just like natural teeth that have bridges on them. So in this raw form, before it's actually ready to go in the patient's mouth, um, I want to point out some things about it that make it so much better than the all-on-4 prosthesis. First of all, I talk in the videos about concave versus convex. And that's what makes or breaks the ability to clean the prosthesis. So at this point, I'd like to compare and contrast the difference between a true implant bridge and an all-on-4. This prosthesis is the traditional all-on-4. And frankly, I don't care whether they call it all-on-4, all-on-6, or all-on-8. There's also a new term, all-on-X, which means we're going to decide how many implants you get sometime after we do your treatment plan. It's all the same, though. All on four creates a prosthesis like this. It's concave. You cannot clean it. The implants are angled, which means the abutments go onto the angled implant um, in a fashion that makes, makes the cleansability even worse. I'll show you what I mean by that from this other cast. So, here is an all-on-4 cast, and these are abutments. All four of them, or all five of them, are angled. Why are they angled? I talk about this over and over in my videos. With the all-on-4 protocol, the surgeon who places the implants, or the general dentist who places the implants, is not careful about where they put them. So the, the manufacturers have come up with angled abutments. So they basically take an implant that should have been parallel like this, and they have to put an angled top on it. So the, the screw hole comes out somewhere within the teeth. If they didn't use an angled abutment, the screw holes would come out through the front of the teeth. So I consider this extremely lazy surgery, uh, uninspired at the very, at the very least, but in a, if you compare these two casts, master cast for implant bridges or a master cast for all on four. So you'll notice that none of the implants come above the tissues in this model. Why is that? Because we want this prosthesis to fit inside the tissues. We don't want any metal exposed. So when you use an angled implant, and you must use an angled abutment, then the chances of metal exposure are much higher. So uh, this, is a, this is an all-on forecast with five implants that were not parallel that all needed angled, angle correction through angled abutments. So I'll go back to this one, the prosthesis. Where you see the pink on this prosthesis is all of this represents bone that the doctor removed at the time of, impl prior to implant placement, removed all that bone to make, make, make way for this prosthesis. I cannot think of a more insane medical or dental technique on earth. Why, why on earth would you ever remove bone when you don't have to? So with the technique of implant bridges, and I didn't invent this, I, I, but I'm a big uh, advocate of it because this is what I would want in my own mouth. Every dentist on earth, every dentist on the planet, this is what they would have in their own mouth. Yet, 99% of the time, this is what patients are getting. Um, it's completely insane. So um, the pink here represents bone that was removed at the time of surgery. Then the implants are put in at uninspired angles, leading to the lack of cleansability. So um, this is an implant, uh, this is a prosthesis done uh, elsewhere, and you can see the, the concave nature on, on the underside of it. All of these areas that are concave cannot be cleaned. And you've seen in my other videos, <clears throat> pardon me, I show uh, some of the food debris that gets in under these prostheses. Um, 
Nobody wants that. Here is a case that I inherited after the surgery was done. And it actually corresponds with this cast that I already showed you. So even though I was limited, completely handcuffed on, on what I could do after the implants were placed and the bone was removed, at the very least, we're making the prosthesis convex. With it being convex, we can, that allows the patient to at least have a fighting chance to clean the prosthesis. So when we inherit cases, it's never, it never is as nice as we'd like it to be, but we can, we do, we can and we do try to improve from the industry standard of something like this to at least make it something that the patient can clean and does fit up against the tissues uh, as intimately as possible. So just to reiterate, um, all on four, uh, done with all of the shortcomings that my videos uh, in the past have described, all on five, which is the same, um, salvaged the best we could here in, in the, at the Dental Implant Center, and then the prosthesis that, trust me, every one of you wants is an, Im, uh, an implant prosthesis, looks, feels, functions, and cleans just like natural teeth bridges. So, I wanted to go back to the case that I started with, um, this, this gentleman's case uh, that I showed you uh, already. So we go through a series of what we call records. We generate a master cast and we also put those models on the articulator. So th there's a series of impressions and records and try-ins that have to happen for us to make this prosthesis as perfect as you want it and as perfect as we want it. Um, many times I want it more perfect than the patients uh, and it frustrates the patients, but in the end, uh, everybody's glad that, that we're as uh, picky as we are. So this is after the case has been what we call mounted or articulated on the articulator. So the inter one of the interim steps that we do to make sure that patients are completely satisfied is we do a wax try-in. Now this was performed uh, on the patient about five weeks ago and it has since broken, no big deal. Um, but I wanted to show you that on this model, the lab creates an, the second prototype. This is the, the wax prototype. So what this does is we, we use the information that we gained from the temporary on the, the, the temporary uh, implant bridge. We made a list of what the patient liked and what the, what the patient didn't like, what I liked, what, the, uh, what I didn't like, and we take about 50 pictures from all different angles. This is where we convey the changes from the temporary bridge to the lab so they can do this wax up prototype and then we try this in. We'll show you pictures of all this uh, in, in still frame photography mixed in with this video. This is the most crucial step, and every implant center will tell you that they do this. Um, but usually it's something that looks like this, and the teeth are often too big and too white. I know most of you have seen the commercials on television where you look at the patients after treatment and their teeth are their teeth just don't look natural. They're too big and they're too white. So <clears throat> I also invite the patient's family to come, any loved ones, any significant others that could contribute to this try-in. That helps us get it just right. So I wanted to show you the second way we, we confirm that, that we're headed in the right direction. Sometimes it takes two or three try-ins with this wax prototype. Sometimes we don't get it right the first time or the second time, but we keep trying until everybody loves the wax up. Then this is scanned and uh, a digital file made and then the zirconium is milled to look like the wax prototype. We leave nothing to chance. So uh, this has now been milled. The, the bulk of this prosthesis, 90% of it was milled in zirconium, but it was cut back, meaning it was shaved back by a couple millimeters 
So the lab can then go in and characterize the zirconium with porcelain. And you may not be able to see it on these close-ups, but there are features about these teeth that you're never going to find in an all-on-4. The all-on-4 prostheses are not layered. They're not customized. They're not characterized. You get to pick one color and out of a, a series of colors, maybe one out of ten different shades, that's what you're going to get. So what we try to do for the patient is, again, what I would want and what every dentist on the planet would want is characterized teeth that look like human dentition. So in here you'll see translucency at the edge. You'll see translucency at the edge of the uh, teeth, which is where all teeth have enamel translucency. You can see through it. And you'll see even the creation of internal character here. Again, it may not be easy to see. We'll show you this in a still picture. But the character characterization of this is what makes it a world-class prosthesis. I joke with the patients on the day that I give them these that, uh, I, that the Smithsonian Institute wanted their teeth, but I, I decided I'd keep them for, for the patient. I know, I think I'm funny. But anyway, um, we'll get to the next step of how we put all this together. But that, that prosthesis, again, um, if I ever lost my teeth, this is what I'd want. So let's get back to the parts and pieces. Uh, I'm going to put these titanium abutments on the implants, and I'll show you how that works. We're going to fast forward uh, at this point uh, so you're not bored watching me put these, these uh, titanium pieces on. It's a little tedious. Uh, I've done it before. Okay, so now the titanium bases are on the master cast. This is the connection between the implant and the prosthesis. It's the intermediate, uh, intermediate part that's called the abutment. And I said earlier that abutments come in uh, angled and straight. So when you use a straight abutment, it can connect to the implant in a in a very uh, friendly, how do I say this? Um, the abutment going straight to the implant allows us better aesthetics and better cleansability. So now the implant bridge gets cemented onto these abutments. This is done in the laboratory before the patient gets here. But I've taken this case a couple days early so that I could actually use it to educate uh, for, this, for this video. So again, we use a different kind of abutment. And here's another, I guess, another selling point for implant bridges. These two front implants, because of bone volume, they couldn't be placed in a way where the screw holes would come through at this angle. So. There's a company out of Spain that makes what's called the dynamic abutment. And it allows for slightly off implant angles to be corrected without using an angled abutment. I know that's very confusing. But it's a very, again, a very clean transition between prosthesis, abutment, and implant. And we can correct angles up to about 30 degrees. So I would just reiterate that there really is no, there is no argument for angled implants or angled abutments uh, in 2022. I see no reason to use them. So this prosthesis, I'll send this back to the lab, and they will then take cement and cement the two pieces together, cementing the abutment to the implant bridge. And it comes back to me all in one piece with the screw holes right here, and we'll use these little blue screws this is even smaller yet. This little blue screw is what we use to, to secure the prosthesis to the implant. And I'm, uh, I'm happy to be using this Swiss implant company who, who has developed this screw. 
it is the only screw in the industri industry that is engineered to tighten at a certain amount of torque and stay tight. I've used this implant company now for 20 years and only in the hardest grinders do these little blue screws ever come loose. The screws that we use or they use for all on four are little tiny silver screws that are actually uh, 25% the size of this blue one. And uh, that's another reason that I don't like to use abutments. The angled abutments are like they use on all on four. The screw is so tiny uh, that, that it seems really weak to me. So um, we'll have still pictures for you of this prosthesis uh, put together uh, in the video, at the end of the video. And um, I think that covers everything that I wanted you to know about implant bridges. Thank you for listening.